Hi everyone, this is Nojo from Thranda Design. In partnership with Just Flight, this is the fourth video in our tutorial video series for the BAE-146. Today, we're looking at descent, approach, and landing procedures. Before we get started, we need to set up one button on our joystick. That's going to be for the air brake control here. Let's go to X-Plane's Settings, Joystick, I'm going to select my throttle, and this button right here, Speed Brakes Toggle. This is X-Plane's default command, Sim, Flight Controls, Speed Brakes Toggle. What that will allow is when we're in the air, that will toggle the speed brakes open and closed. And once we're on the ground, if the speed brakes are open, that will also allow our lift spoilers to deploy down here. Welcome aboard. We are above the beautiful state of Montana in the United States. We're flying eastbound at 27,000 feet, flight level 270, on the Victor 2 airway, and we're about uh, 35 miles west of the Mullen Pass VOR, and today we're going into Missoula, Montana. We're going to shoot the ILS Yankee Runway 12 approach. I'm going to include a link to that approach in the description so you can follow along with this tutorial if you'd like, although that's certainly not required. So the first thing to discuss is descent planning. The rule of thumb for descent is take the number of thousands of feet you need to descend times three. That gives you the distance in nautical miles that you need to start your descent. So in this specific example, uh, the ILS runway 1-2 approach takes us from the Mullen Pass VOR, here at 30 miles, to Negoi intersection. And we need to cross Negoi intersection at 10,500. So that means we need to descend from 27,000 to 10,500 which is a dis difference of 16,500 feet. So let's call it 16,000 feet. So 16 times three is 48. So we need to begin our descent 48 miles out from Nagoi intersection. And fortunately, Mullen Pass VOR happens to be exactly 48 miles out from Nagoi intersection. So we will begin our descent when we cross Mullen Pass VOR. Easy. So here we are just approaching Mullen Pass. We're seven and a half miles out from it. So a couple things are gonna happen at once. We're gonna descend and make a turn at the same time. And we also need to set a new course. So right now, let's sync up our heading bug to our current heading, and we're gonna go to heading hold mode. So now we can set the new course, which is going to be 095 degrees. So that's ready to go. For the descent, we're going to find our altitude selector, whoops, go down. We're gonna select 11,000, actually 10,500 feet, and we're gonna arm the new altitude. And once we're ready to descend, we're pretty much there. We're gonna to go to vertical speed mode. I'm going to decrease the throttle, and I'm gonna press and hold the sync button and let that nose come down. Just, I'm manually pushing the nose down to about just below 2,000 feet per minute. Let go of sync. There we go, the autopilot should now hold us at about 1,700 feet per minute. I can use our, our airspeed bug here and this airspeed indicator to kind of set my power. I just want to maintain our current airspeed. So I'm a little slow. I'll bump up the power just a touch. Whoops, and there goes our course. So we're going to move the heading bug, and we're going to re-intercept that course. Now, how did I know about 2,000 feet per minute? The answer is, for the rate of descent, you'll take your ground speed in knots times five, so ground speed times five. Our ground speed was about 400 knots, so we, that would be about 2,000 feet per minute, 400 times five. Now, I know that we're gonna slow down a little bit as we descend, so I'm gonna aim for a little less than that, so I'm calling it about 16 or 1,700 feet per minute for now. And actually, let's bring it down a little faster. So sync button, a little further down on the nose, let go of sync. There we go. And so now, here we are, well on our way for descending. Now the next step is going to be, we're going to bring up our checklist and the descent checklist. We'll go through this at 18,000 feet. So let's skip ahead. We're coming up on 18,000 feet, so let's go through our descent checklist. So I'll go here to the menu, checklists, and descent. <laughs> it's already on it. So first is PTU on. This will be backup for the green hydraulic system. Pressurization set. A Missoula's landing altitude is 3,200, so we're going to go 500 feet above that, so 3,700. Briefing complete. This is where we would brief our uh, approach. In this case, we're going to skip that, but we've got the ATIS set here, approach frequency here, and tower frequency here. Also, we set the localizer standby in number one here, 109.3, and just briefing it. Essentially, we're going to be intercepting the localizer direct from Nagoi intersection. 
Uh, next, ice protection as required, just the heaters on. We don't need the airframe ice or engine ice today. And landing data, bugs, checked and set. So we're at 35,000 kilograms. For flaps 33, our VREF is 115, so let's set that here with the white bug. And then we're going to use our airspeed bug here for V approach, which is VREF plus 10, or in other words, 125. Additionally, uh, we'll set the local altimeter setting to 2996, which is already there, and that came from the ATIS. And we would also set our decision height at this time. In this case, though, it's a little bit weird because Missoula's decision height is 1,900 feet. It's an unusually high approach, so we won't set it there. So we'll skip ahead to the next set of approaches as we start intercepting the, uh, the localizer there. So we're coming up on our altitude here, and we're still several miles out from Nagoi, so that's good. We want to plan ahead. So let's go through our approach check. Altimeters, uh, checked and set, 2909 or 6, yes they are. Lights and notices, coming up on 10,000, so we'll go lights on, fasten seat belts on. APU, as required, we'll get that started up, although we're not going to be using it quite yet. Turn on the APU gen. Also brake fans, verify they are on auto. Fuel panel set, center transfer on auto and cross feed shut, and the standby pumps and common feeds are off, up is off, and the pumps are all on. Cabin notify, we'll say seats for landing. Cabin crew, please take your seats for landing. And we'll pretend they acknowledge, so we are secured for landing. And radar altitude cross-checked, so we're actually above twenty or above 6,000, so it's not going to show anything for us yet. So we're getting close to Nagoi intersection. We're about two miles out, or sorry, we're about four miles out, but let's see if we can get the localizer yet. So we're gonna sync up the heading bug to our current heading and go to heading mode. Now that frees us to switch over to the localizer and we can set in the inbound course, 117 degrees. And here we see, sure enough, nope, no localizer signal yet. We're a little too far out. But that's okay. Once we get to Negoi intersection, we'll use heading mode and we'll turn to just parallel this course and we'll start driving inbound. Now interestingly, we see the glide slope is already alive, so we're going to have to duck down below that uh, before, what's the next? The next one is Jeleg. So just about there, I'm just going to go ahead and turn us now. And we're going to set in our next altitude, which is 8,600. So right about there. Arm, vertical speed, and we're going to use the sync button and I'm just going to decrease the throttle and we're going to plop right on down there at about 2,000 feet per minute. We're going to kind of drop quickly here. Let go of the sync button. Now the autopilot should be maintaining that vertical speed and I'm just verifying we have the new altitude armed. It's uh, white there. Okay. So pretty soon, now we're inside of Negoi for sure. I'm going to let the airplane start slowing down, so I'm just going to pull that throttle right on back. And as we level at 8,600, that'll also help us slow down. And the reason for that is that'll get us below 205, so we can start putting in the gear and the flaps. And we can start going through our before landing checklist. Um, we'll do this once we're actually established on the ILS. Aha! So it looks like the localizer's alive. We'll see if that needle, yep, swings back in. So let's go VL for VOR localizer mode essentially nav mode. Altitude has captured 8,700. We're leveling off at 8,600. This is looking good. So now we're just watching for that glide slope to come in. And I'm going to let the speed keep coming on down. So we'll, Martin will tell us once we're below 205 that we can uh, put the flaps in. And then we'll go flaps 18. One dot high on the glide slope. So we're going to go gear down, and then we're going to let our speed just come right on down to V uh, V approach, which is 125, and we'll keep putting in the flaps as we go. So there, below 180, below 160. Okay, and we'll arm the glide slope. Here we go. We are coming down on the localizer now. And below 145, we can go full flaps. Now that autopilot is having to use pitch trim quite a bit to compensate for those flaps as they uh, as they extend, which if we were not using autopilot manually, we would have to be rolling that pitch trim quite a bit. So I'm going to add power to try to capture our speed, and then we'll go through our before landing checklist. So landing, AC pump, auto on for the yellow hydraulic system. Gear is down with three green. 
Lights as required, we got lights on, landing lights on. Flaps are set for landing. Cabin secured, we'll say Cabin secure seats for, landing. seats for landing. And we can get confirmation, we'll switch this over, cabin secured for landing. Ice protection as required, it is set as required. APU air, we're gonna go over to APU air and we're gonna turn the engine air off. So now the APU is providing all of our um, air conditioning. Engine air and packs as required, which they are, and TMS we will disconnect by 200 feet. Okay. Our next checklist is the after landing checklist. So let's skip ahead to the actual landing. Okay, we're about 500 feet up on final. I'm gonna close our checklist just so I can uh, see a little easier. Now, as we get down here, we're gonna disconnect the autopilot and we're gonna turn off the TMS. And now we can deploy speed brakes. So I'm just gonna click my joystick button for speed brakes toggle and that's gonna deploy the air brake. And you see this white indication right here. And from this point on, I'm just hand flying it looking for my airspeed to come down to that white mark for V-Ref. I'm decreasing the power a little bit. Oops, I kind of ducked below the glide slope there. That's okay. So as we come next to the runway, we're just smoothly going to pull the power to idle and smoothly raise the nose up about five degrees and just gently bonk. There it is. So now I can press the speed brake button again as I let yeah, the nose down. And that's going to deploy the spoilers. So we have spoilers deployed and air brake deployed. And then just smoothly on the brakes, and we'll uh, take this exit. Oh, I might actually overshoot. Can we make it? Can we make it? Well, here, we're going to demonstrate the tight turning capabilities of the BAE 146. Now that we're slow, add a little power, and just nice full deflection on that nose wheel steering. And we will exit the runway. Okay, now let's bring up our checklist again. We have an after landing checklist to go through. Air brakes and spoilers in, so I'm going to press the speed brakes toggle button one more time, and that will retract those. Flaps up, just going to hit my flaps up button a bunch. Lights and strobes as required, so we're going to go to taxi lights, and the strobes way up here, we're going to turn off. TMS off, we verified it is. Radar standby or off, and we'll go to off. Transponder as required, we'll go to standby. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to taxi us up there. Engine anti-ice. As required, off is fine. Continuous ignition, the ignitions on the engines, off is fine for today. We didn't have them on for this approach because it was a nice clear day. If it was raining, we would have had them on. Air conditioning, as required. So we're on the APU air, air conditioning is set, so that's all looking good. Generators, as required, we can leave those on for the moment. And engines, as required. This is the point we could actually shut down two of the engines if we wanted to save some fuel. But we'll go ahead and do the shutdown uh, once we get up here. We're just going to pull up next to this hangar here, and we'll, we'll shut down in the middle. We're just going to block the, the taxiway. I'm sure nobody's going to mind. So I'm just going to line the plane up here, a little bit on the brakes. There we go. And I'm going to go down here, and we'll set the parking brake, and we'll just verify we do have good brake pressure. So let's go to our shutdown checklist. Brakes are set to yellow and pulled out for park. Pressure is checked. Taxi and exit lights off, so taxi light. These would be the runway exit lights. They're already off. Pressurization depressurized, so we can verify we have no delta P, no delta pressure, differential pressure. Hydraulics, all off. So that's pump, DC pump is off, AC pump, PTU, and engine three pump. Gens one and four down to off reset. So these are the engine generators. We already had the APU generator on, so we're not gonna actually lose any power yet. Thrust levers, fuel off. So we'll go lever, 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 and off, 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 off. And we're just gonna verify, we see that temperature's all falling. We don't have any that are kind of hung. Seat belts, sign, off, boom, boom. Engine anti-ice goes on, this is for the next start. Heaters, all off, two clicks for the that one. Um, sorry, where did we go? Ice detect, off. So we're gonna open the guard and turn the ice detect switch off close the guard again. Beacon comes off, off. Air conditioning as required and transponder standby off. So transponder is on standby. So in this condition, this is a good condition at the gate. We have our APU still running, still providing electrical power and still providing air conditioning for the passengers. Um, leaving the aircraft, this will be the actual full shutdown. So when we're completely ready to shut down, 
we will go oxygen off it's these switches over here off off master switches off these are way up here the yaw damper autopilot master avionics a and b brake fans off uh, anti-skid lift spoilers off 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 cabin emergency lights ah uh, where are you off <laughs> there they are air conditioning packs off apu air off apu test override or stop we're just going to go to stop and it'll take a couple minutes we see the temperature is falling and then or sorry a couple seconds not minutes after a few moments there we go now we see the apu is beginning to spool down fuel pumps come off galley we'll go to shed turn off the the galley power finally lights off and batteries off turn off the apu gen so there we go that was descent approach and landing a reasonably okay landing in the bae 146 i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you'll join me for our next tutorial video which is going to be all about the thrust modulation system we'll talk about how to use it where to use it when to use it so thank you hope you have a great day and i'll uh, join you next time